or give it all up. Right. You know, because we got nip as friend music, whatever it may be. You know, y'all sharing bedrooms, that's that's like me and my bro. Right. You know, at some point do you feel like any of this is worth it or were you ready to throw it all away? Oh no, nah, man. Not hundred percent like crash crash out, broad daylight, whoever. And you know, we start figuring out who 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 they who the streets were saying it was and you know, that's what the whole unit was like. We gonna f where, where's this nigga at? Mm -hmm. And you know, that was the mind space at that point. Yeah. Aside from just dealing with you know the reality, you know, but it was go time, man. And you know, they're gonna make sure the kids is good, make sure his kids is good, and make sure we keep going. Is it as random as what? The public thought it was like nip seeing somebody eric and talked and i mean uh, you know he, are, he already got convicted so for me without without going into too many details mm -hmm. somebody come to the shop they know we in, we, we in the doorway. When Hustle pull up, we in the doorway. You're going to see me with a hoodie on, and I got a pistol on me. You're going to see one of my one of the team members in the hoodie, uh, uh, in the doorway with a pistol. That's protocol, when Hustle pull up. <clears throat> so it's Sunday. It's busy in there. Why, why, why the niggas in there didn't follow, follow the protocol? I wasn't there. Why they didn't follow it? Maybe they just fucking around helping the customer, doing some fucking customer service. This is what I'm thinking, trying to, you know, transition into some legitimate mm -hmm. selling clothes. But nobody was in the, nobody was in the doorway. And um, from my understanding, old boy walked up with no shirt on first to check the scene because he knows he know what he know what's going on in that parking lot and um, had a conversation probably seen nobody was in the doorways, checked Hustle hat on shorts, checked everybody else, left. They say came back with a red shirt on, tiptoed through the alley and went right and started shooting. So to me, that's premeditated. Number one, there's no red shirts in the hood. You can't buy no red shirt. No, no liquor store sell no red shirt. Number two, when a nigga come through the alley with a red shirt, that's the throw off. Or the Bloods did it. Or the Inglewood families did it. Or the BPS. That's the throw off. Red shirt. So for me, he felt he was supposed to he he, he was supposed to do a job or somebody sent him or whatever, and he was nervous. He was supposed to hit that alley with that red shirt immediately. But he didn't do that. He came in and he wanted to check the scene. He wanted to make sure he 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 wasn't getting into a shootout. And that's that that's my that's my thoughts on it. You understand? So, and can't nobody tell me nothing about that because it just it just don't make no sense. It's not random, you know. No hustle. You know, ain't nobody ain't nobody gonna say nothing crazy to hustle, cause they know what come with it. No matter what age you are, niggas ain't saying nothing crazy to hustle. Wherever you find him at, but on Crenshaw and Slauson, definitely you're not saying nothing crazy. You're going to come, you're going to tuck your tail and be humble. And if not, you're getting beat up on the spot. And we done did it a million times. Hustle done did it a million times. So the fact that he left, tell me everything I need to know. It was no argument. You know, it was no, it was no, 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 no. It was no sense of threat because with that come like, hey, be on deck. Yeah, it, it was yeah. none of that. It was just, you know, to me it was, let me come through, let me see what's going on, and then let me, you know, and it's broad daylight, man, and it's, you know, it's a lot of, a lot of unanswered questions, man. You don't believe he had any dialogue with, with Nip that day, or did anybody say he said something? Yeah, no, they had, they had dialogue, but it was in the mix of him coming up, talking to bro, and, you know, 
whatever whatever transpired it wasn't okay she says holder then got out the car put on a red shirt and instructed her not to move okay see see how that lie is <laughs> he went through the alley allegedly firing several shots at nipsey and others and ran back to the car she says when he got back in the car holder had two guns the black city the semi-automatic and also a smaller revolver he put the nine millimeter in his bag of food According to Docs, Witness 1 was test was testifying under an immunity agreement, meaning nothing she said can be used against her in any future persecution. She has not been charged in connection with the murder. Additionally, Nipsey Business Associate Herman Douglas, a.k.a. Cowboy, a.k.a. Uh, Fishy, <laughs> Okay, a.k.a. Thundercat, okay? He testified for the grand jury. He was at the Marathon Clothing that day of the, murder, of the murder and says he and Nipsey saw Holder in the car when he drove into the strip mall. Herman says Nipsey said, is that shitty? That's Holder's street name. Herman describes the conversation between Nipsey and Holder as non-confrontational. Did not say that. Did not say that. It was non-confrontational. It was cool, calm, and collective. Okay, let me read. But he too says Nipsey told Herder, uh, Holder he heard rumors about him snitching. And Nipsey advised Holder to take care of it. Herman says Holder denied it, saying it, saying MFers be hating on me. He says at the end, Nipsey and Holder shook hands and parted ways with zero animosity. Okay. Now that was according to TMZ. Now, here's the thing. Now y'all know they statements is wrong. I mean, they both lie. They lie. You know, she lying to stay out of jail. Now, if she say that, yeah, Holder went there to shoot him, then she becomes a, an accessory. She will become an, an accessory to murder. You know, so then they'll be able to charge her. So, of course, she going to say, oh, no, I didn't know. But, see, here's the problem. When he told you that he wanted to do a drive-by, and you refused, but then he told you to stay right here while you didn't leave. If you knew that he pulled out a handgun, a black semi, a semi-automatic, you know, if he, if he pulled that out and told you to stay right here, why you didn't leave? Like, I don't want no parts of that. Why you didn't leave? Okay, because y'all came in there on some BS already. Y'all, this was already planned. She wasn't waiting to take no picture with Nipsey. I'm just trying to, I'm trying to figure this out. Mm. Don't that sound familiar? She was waiting to take a picture with Nipsey. Wait a minute. Now, he be at the store sometime. Like, but ain't that something that Carrie said too? Carrie said that he was a fan, and he just took a picture with him. Mm hmm. Ain't that ain't that what he said? Ain't that what Carrie initially said? Now, if you haven't followed the story, don't come for me. Go back and watch my other video so that you can catch up because you're lost. Carrie initially said that he didn't know Nipsey and that he was a fan. You know, he he took a picture with him before. This is what he claimed. Now, she's saying that she was excited to see Nipsey and was waiting to take a picture. Girl, bye. Because I'm like, y'all probably could take a picture with him anytime. Like, if, if, if you really wanted to. You feel me? Like, come on. People say he was at the store. You know, come on. Stop playing. That They stories sound the same. They stories sound the same. Now, let's just say 
all this information was true. So, cowboy, if that's true, that you told the grand jury that it wasn't no beef, it wasn't no animosity, why did you say Holder came up and shook y'all hand and told y'all that he, uh, he rapped? You tried to play it like Holder didn't know Nipsey. But they did know each other. See, wasn't that the thing? <laughs> they was trying to play it like like Eric Holder and Nipsey didn't know each other. He was like just some some dude from the neighborhood, you know, some wannabe uh rapper. He came up and and shook our hand and told us that he rapped. That mm. see cowboy, why you lie? Why you lie? Why, if that's your statement to the grand jury, why that couldn't have been your statement in the beginning? You feel me? Why that couldn't have been your statement in the beginning? You know, yeah, they heard, they had a conversation about, you know, about uh, snitching, but they didn't end bad. You know, it wasn't no beef. They shook hands, and Nipsey told him to handle that. That's it. Why you just couldn't say that, see? Because when you got to lie, that means you covering up some stuff. They went there, that woman and Eric Holder, they went there to kill Nipsey. It was all a set up. That It was already set up. He didn't just see Nipsey, whatever. He didn't just see him and say, oh, oh, there go Nipsey. And then y'all end on good terms and all of a sudden. Nah, that wasn't that because that picture I showed y'all, if Nipsey, fed, they said now, this is what they said. People from the neighborhood said all shitty cousins are about that life. They they wasn't weak. Okay? So, Nipsey ain't finna turn his back on somebody that can be uh, a potential, you know, a potential threat to him, you know, or a potential that can do him bodily harm that could potentially do him bodily harm i'm doing five things more than one i'm doing five things at one time y'all gotta excuse me but yeah now peep that so why would he turn his back on him because they probably maybe maybe they did have a conversation now this is all alleged because nobody but these people who have set him up to be murdered said that it was a story about snitching or was it just a regular combo but however whatever they plan to kill him already somebody lured him to the store and that's where it went down. Just so happened he was at the store. And just so happened Eric Holder rolled up on him. And just so happened Carrie uh, saw him and needed a white shirt. Even though Nipsey sells nothing but white tees. And there's white tees all over. Just so happened. Come on now, y'all. That ain't no just so happened. That's not a just so happened. They are lying. But of course they gonna lie. And old Herman Douglas. Oh, and he, oh, let's let's not forget Herman Douglas, cowboy, he just so happened to go in. And he just so happened to come out with Eric Holder. Just got done finished shooting. Just so happened, right? Oh, this is a whole big bowl of just so happened. Man, if y'all don't get out of here, this is crazy. But I'm glad we getting some insight as far as this case is concerned. Because somebody called him up there and it was already a plan and a plot to kill him. It was a plan and a plot to kill him. That was it. Eric Holder was already paid to do the job. Carrie had to get him there. Carrie, somebody called him there. Now, if you, now, if you remember, <laughs> remember, listen, I want y'all to hear me, because I'm going to be the first one to tell you, if Nipsey is shot in you, if he was shot anywhere in the head, it's because Carrie did it. Of course, Eric Holder was going to come back with two guns because he had got Carrie's gun. 
And if you follow Carrie, you will find Big U. But that's my time. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe. Bye-bye.